Previously on the Omen podcast... Archaeologists have recently uncovered a large black sarcophagus containing the bodies of three individuals. These bodies are unimportant to Omen. What is important, however, is the liquid surrounding said corpses. We're working with the Discovery team to gain a purified sample of the liquid, and tonight he will join delegates and museum benefactors on a Nile cruise. The lights turn off. There is a massive power cut. Am I armed? Do I have my guns? You do have one of your guns, yes. Okay. How did she bring it onto the plane? Don't ask questions. It's called prison purse. Thank you. Uh, and he opens up a door, and inside there is a woman. She's uh, pulling out wires, putting them back in. So Samara is the this place is like last line of security, then basically. Behind some bulletproof glass is the coffin. I want to headbutt the glass. How did any of you get this job? In comes Yasmin Safar, who is Amir's personal assistant. Can I still call you Koala, though? I feel like that would be kind of rude, considering I just told you my name was Vol Michigan. Vol Michigan and the rest of the team go to the yacht. There is singing and dancing going on, and there's a DJ. I want three wallaby wrestlers. Edmund hits it big, and he rolls the perfect roll for whatever game he is rolling for. It's blackjack. You hear a loud scream and a splash from near the back of the boat. What will happen next? Let's find out in this episode of Omen. Okay, so there was a loud splash and a scream at the back of the boat and everyone sort of like got up and they're looking and they're already confused and chaos is going on around you. What are you going to do? Observation check. You do an observation check and you notice you see a single foot running away from the scene of the crime um, and you don't see anything else other than that. I'm going to draw, redraw my gun. Okay, you pull out your gun and instantly someone notices the gun and everyone starts panicking. <laughs> so there are people running around around you. Trying to get away from the person with a gun. Can I can I make a luck check to hopefully have less panic or something? All right, roll um roll like seven or more for luck. Okay. Nice. Okay, so you managed to go right. Calm down. Calm down. You you're lucky. You you you've done a really good job of just keeping everyone calm with your calm movements. A beacon of calmness. Y'all just gotta slow it down, and I got this handled. Yes. Okay. What is Vol doing? <laughs> I want to backflip out of my chair, uh, combat roll across the ground to the gambling table, kick the gambling table over, and do like a combat ready stance with like my hands in like a karate position. I don't know karate, but I know it's intimidating. Okay, you do that. You don't seem to realize that the casino table is on the opposite side of the boat <laughs> to where the thing is happening. So you run in the opposite direction of everyone else kick the table over which throws all of Edmund's money everywhere and then uh, you just sit there staring at absolutely no one in a karate ready pose what is Martin doing? Martin is uh, now that he has the opportunity pouring this awful awful drink overboard <laughs> and then downing his gin and tonic I feel a piece of myself like depart like something died inside I don't know what. Um, and what about Edmund? So I'm still standing by the gambling table. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when when Vol basically kicked the table over and, and my winnings er erupted into the air, they all kind of flew into me, which I mistook for gunfire. So I, I've sort of leapt to the ground in like a fetal position, <laughs> um, just desperately trying to avoid the whole situation. Amazing. So you can hear the screaming coming from the water still. Is anyone going to go to hell? Yeah. No. <laughs> wow, that's the mo like, yeah, I guess, I suppose I should. I'll head on over and try to help. You head on over and you can see, like, a bunch of people are crowded around, so there's, you can't get to the mess that's going on right now. So what are you going to do? 
I'm gonna point my gun up in the air and I'm gonna fire it to make them scatter. Wait, wait. So you calmed everyone down and then you went back and now you're firing in the air. Well, now you don't have to understand my American logic, but it's gonna work. Trust me. I think. You shoot up in the air. Can you roll um, a seven or more in luck, please? Yes, I can. Very well. You can. You can. You can indeed. So you you shoot the gun, and those people who were calm but also kind of panicked are now incredibly panicked. And they all run in the opposite direction, parting like the Great Red Sea, uh, allowing you to get to the front of the boat. And you can see down in the water, there in the water, panicking and trying to swim, but she can't swim very well, is Samara. Uh, and she's looking up at you and going, help, help. I'm still in the combat ready stance. At first, I'm going to feel like Moses for a little bit. And then I'm going to lean over and I'm going to try and give her my hand to get her. Is she close enough to reach? Uh... Unfortunately, it's a very, very tall boat. Oh, damn. It's at this moment you can hear the hissing of alligators, which I find particularly weird because alligators aren't actually native to the Nile. <laughs> These ones have gone missing from Cairo Zoo and they've managed to get into the water somehow. Things could be worse because Nile crocodiles are even bigger and nastier. Okay, well, I'm going to shout back to the other idiots and I'm going to go, Y'all, we need to help Samara over here. I'll keep the gators off her. Gators! Suddenly, I have a flashback. <laughs> I'm gonna walk over there, cautiously at least. I'm gonna try to shoot at the gators to keep them, like, deterred. Can you roll a 15 in um, agility? No. No, I cannot. Oh no. Um, your skills are missing for some reason. Wait. Don't you get like a plus for your shooting skills? I get plus five. Is that enough? That's nah, only eleven. Oh no. You you hit you hit one of them, but it only grazes it and it just hisses back at you and they're getting closer and closer. And at the very last moment, Samara looks up and she says, Yeah and then falls and then falls underneath and the the alligators jump on top of her and start ripping her to bits. Well shit. Good job, Annabelle. At this point, I, I run over with, like, arms full of coins too late to basically start throwing them at the alligators. I'm still frozen. I'm having a flashback. I know so there's something about alligators, something in my past, something that could help. Can it? I mean, not now. <laughs> because the water is now filled with the blood of the innocent because you're all kind of useless. At least I tried. They, well, this is what they hired the muscle for. I'm not here for that. Well, unfortunately, the muscle... Can the muscle even swim? Can Vol Michigan, by his name, swim? Uh, I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> unfortunately, at this point, it's kind of useless because, unfortunately, Samara has been killed before she could say anything about the person who pushed her into the water. Do I know that she's been killed? You do not at this moment in time. You are still standing there uh, in your sort of... Vietnam style flashback about the gators. All right, I snap out of it and I know what to do. I run to the side of the boat and I leap into the water. Don't even look. Oh no. Michigan, no! So, so the thing I've discovered about gators is that they're extremely susceptible to being tricked. Tr hypnotized isn't the right word, but tricked is somewhere in the vicinity. So what I'm gonna trick the alligator into thinking is that it's a skateboard. Can I uh, can I try to grab um, Michigan by the ankle as he like jumps off? Uh, you can roll a twenty for strength, please. Oh God! <laughs> I'm assuming this means I go with him. <laughs> Doctor Martin Benson falls into the water. Oh God! With koala, uh, with 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 Vol <laughs> Michigan, and they both go tumbling into the Nile below. They are both covered in blood. Oh, please no. Samara's blood. Um, and Annabelle and Edmund are just looking flabbergasted about what is going on. I'm screaming, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn into skateboard. Don't worry. I'm going to turn into skateboard. I'm going to save you. Wh whoever this... Oh my gosh, it's Samara's face. I have Samara's face in my hands. I start just, like, throwing coins furiously to try and distract the alligators. Okay, can you roll for luck, please? Can you roll a 20 for luck? I mean, I hope so. You roll a seven, which just pisses them off more. Oh god. <laughs> just throwing coins at them, and you're even throwing coins at Koala and Vol. I mean, not Koala and Vol, Martin and Vol. And they're just getting peppered with coins. And it's making it more difficult for them to swim. Ow! I'm not trying to swim. I'm trying to climb onto a... I'm gonna... 
I'm gonna whisper the code word. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the thing that makes it turn into a skateboard. And I'm gonna ride it like a surf skate thing. Right. Roll a fifteen for strength. All right. Strength don't fail me now. Six. <sighs> You try and grab the alligator, and it just sort of throws you off and tries to bite you. Can you roll a 10 for agility or more, please? There we go. You got a 15. So you managed to dodge the attack. It's at this moment that the Coast Guard come in, uh, and they start firing darts at the alligators to get them off your backs, and they pull you onto the, um, onto the boat. Is it wrong that I want to... I feel sort of an erotic attraction to the alligators at this point. It is wrong. I didn't lose my glasses in the river, right? So, okay, roll for luck, please. Roll a 10 for luck or more, please. No! Martin lost his glasses, but Koala managed to grab them. Yeah. So we're all good on the glasses angle at the minute. Thank God. Free glasses! Yeah, so Koala thinks that there are free glasses, so you're going to have to get them off of him at some point. Please give those back. Those are mine. I can't see without them, and I assume... Okay, sorry, I assume that they are mine, but I can't see them. Let me describe... Okay, on the side it's written... M... Bit... <laughs> yes, that sounds like my name. No, nah, no, nah, I'm pretty sure... Say your name real quick. M... Bit... <laughs> oh, that's perfect! That's exactly what it says on here. Whilst these two are trying to argue over their glasses, um, Annabelle and uh, Edmund... Are on the deck and the route like the rooms that people have been staying in on the yacht like they're sort of like hangout areas you decide to go and check out samara's place where she's been spending most of the night so you get there the place is completely deserted because everyone's been grabbing getting on board the coast guard ship to get moved away from the boat because it's now a crime scene it's up to you guys to do some investigation okay so what's the room like like you know sort of like your, your standard cabin it's it's not overly luxurious, but it's quite nice. It's not like the Ryanair flight you guys took two episodes ago. It, it's pretty decent. There's like a little bathroom, uh, there's a bed, uh, and there's a little desk with a couple of drawers. Can I investigate the desk? Yep. So you look inside the desk and you pull out a post-it note. Attached to the post-it note is one of the blank key cards. Ooh. It says for Amir on it. There is also a um, USB drive in there. I hand both of these things to Annabelle <laughs> as, as clues that I don't entirely know what to do with. I will put them into my prison purse and put them away for later. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, there is also a, a, a laptop on the bed, so you could potentially use the USB in the laptop if you wanted to. Well, I ain't got no idea how to use a computer like that. You got any idea? I have a theory. About how to use a laptop? <laughs> yes. But I will begrudgingly get a second opinion from Martin and take the laptop out front with him. So you take the laptop out of the room. Uh, do you want to search anywhere else in the room? I would like to uh, survey the room for any weirdness. Can you roll a 15 for observance, please? Oh, no. You roll a 13. Um, so you notice there's a nice sweet smell in the air. That's all you can really notice. Like soap or flour? Or woman? Perfume, like flowery perfume. Okay. Edmund, do you want to roll for observation as well? Can I follow the smell? It's all over the place. There's no real trail. What's it smell like? Uh, it smells like perfume. It smells like the kind of perfume someone would wear at a party like this. Hmm. Suspiciously context relevant. Can I check under the bed? You look under the bed and you find one of those, you know, like the, the clip on nails? Like the stick on nails? Interesting. Underneath it, there's, you can see like a little bit of like skin. So there was a struggle. There was some sort of struggle here. Something happened. I think we need to bring this to Martin. I, I don't think either of us are smart enough to put pieces together. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you leave the room, and then um, Martin and you, you, you find that Martin and Vol are sitting on the deck of the ship, dripping slightly and slightly pink from, well, like sort of pinky brown from all the blood on like their clothes and stuff. Can I whisper something to Martin? Please don't. <laughs> You lean in really closely. And I say, I've still got Samara's face. <laughs> I scoot away as far as I can on whatever surface we are. I don't know what to do with it. Have you tried not having it? No. Give it to 
someone else. I don't know. It's not my face. I'll try it. Okay. I look very unsuspicious. Annabelle and Edmund come up to you uh, and they're holding the laptop. Uh, what do you do? What, what have you found, guys? So I, I give Martin the laptop and then immediately take the I, I take Samara's face from Vol. You don't know that I have it. You don't know that I have it. Oh, I thought you were holding it in your hand. No, it's in the pocket. Oh, that's horrible. In that case, I just give you... <laughs> in that case, I just give Martin the laptop and kind of look between them, not really particularly disconcerted about all the blood. Uh, uh what do you want me to do with this? Uh, so we found a memory stick? Um, I... I have a computer. I'm not great with it. I, are you holding the memory stick right now? Uh, Annabelle has it. So I sort of gesture at her bag. I pull out my prison purse and I open it for him. <laughs> I I don't want to reach in there. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll I start shuffling through my prison purse and I pull out a uh, memory stick and the sticky note. It's stuck to a mint now, but it's out. You give it to him and he plugs it into the laptop and the laptop turns on. It, it's not password protected. I tut 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 at the bad security. Yeah, oh, Samara was more in, like looking towards protecting the main building rather than her own stuff. Uh, and you load it up, uh, and you go into the USB stick, and there's a bunch of MP3 files for like just random bits of music. I play Smash Mouth All Star. <laughs> you do play Smash Mouth All Star, and it starts playing, uh, and the like Egyptian police who are trying to investigate look at you and just like roll their eyes. At the same time, you your eyes are drawn to an Excel spreadsheet uh, that says foundit.xlx. I open it? You open it, and you find a great big long sheet, which is just the accounting sheets for the, um, the, the, the museum. I'd like to roll for observation. I have some training in accountancy. Do you? I'd like to see if there's any weirdness. Okay, so you roll. Yep, yeah, that's fine, I suppose. Well, you notice that there are a bunch of red highlights across the whole thing um, and there is a comment underneath one of them and you deduce from this that Amir has been embezzling money from the museum to help fund his retirement retirement is important I'm not going to say anything well everyone else can notice these red <laughs> marks and comments <laughs> everywhere as well so <laughs> it doesn't really matter yeah no I mean it, I guess it seems like he's been fiddling with the numbers, but that doesn't seem like it's super relevant to uh, our mission. That's not of my business. So, um, well, everyone else has left the boat already, so uh, there's a high probability that you're going to have to check with Amir in the morning. Mm. Uh, so you'll have to leave here and head back to your hotel for the night. Can we talk to the Australian police? <laughs> the Australian police? No, because they're not here. You can talk to the Egyptian police. <laughs> the, the Egyptian police, sorry. they all It all blurs together. Uh, law enforcement. Uh, can we talk to them at all? Uh, yeah, sure. The, there's a bunch of them, sort of like there's a forensics team trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and, and they're just sort of like about their business. Do you want to chat with them? What does everyone else think? Should we talk with the cops? Like I get my my voice gets goes from being really loud to being really quiet. Like the cops. As I understand it, the less uh, people who are not in our organization know, the better. Well, do they even speak American? Because I'm sorry, but I only speak one language. I tried learning Mexican, but it just didn't stick. <laughs> this is true. They do they do not know how to speak English. So it might be better if you head back to your hotels. And on that bombshell. That is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching. Oh, thank you for listening.
The Omen podcast is powered by Ellipsis RPG, the accessible donationware rule set. Now available on itch.io. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. You can tweet to us at the hashtag OmenCast, that's O-M-E-N cast, and who knows, you might get a special mention in one of the episodes from us. Thank you for listening, and remember, stay vigilant. You never know what's out there.